welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 on Tamil's television coming to you live from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo continues his series of consultations on promoting national unity with input from media practitioners. Federal High Court in Abuja fails to dismiss a $1.6 billion fraud charge brought against Jide Omokere and four others by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Former FCT Minister Jumoke Akinjide is remanded in EFCC custody following her arraignment over a 650 million naira money laundering charge. And South Africa's highest court rules that a vote of no confidence against President Jacob Zuma can be held in secret. Just a reminder now that for more on our top stories and others, please visit our website channelcv.com and youtube.com forward slash channels web. You can also watch us on the go on your mobile device, log on to m.channelcv.com or download the Channel TV app for Android, iOS and Windows phones from their respective stores. Having the Channel TV and Channels 24 app will give you access to news and updates. You also have the eyewitness feature so you too can be part of the news. Just install the app, then tap and swipe to reveal the eyewitness menu and follow the instructions to share those pictures, videos or news of happenings around you. We have some of those pictures and here they are. Let's begin with this set of pictures from River State showing a container which has fallen on a car. The accident, our eyewitness reporter says, is owing to the bad state of the road there. Our next is this one from Apapa here in Lagos State showing a flooded road. Our eyewitness reporter says this is due to poor drainage. Still on floods is this set of pictures from the Oba Elegushi Palace Road in Leki area of Lagos State. According to our eyewitness reporter, the flood results from blocked drainages and neglect of the environment and they want something done about it urgently. Our final image is from Ikotek Mane in Akwaibom State. Our eyewitness reporter says the road is a nightmare for both residents and motorists whenever it rains. And they're calling on the relevant agencies to do something about the situation. That's for your pictures and do keep them coming. To Edo State now, where indigents of host communities to the Okomo Oil Palm Estates and members of civil society groups are protesting the alleged harassment, intimidation and destruction of the natural environment by the oil palm community. The protesters who took their protests to the Edo State House of Assembly and the Government House also alleged the violation of the state government's revocation order of 13,750 hectares of land area in Okomo and Oman forests by the company. Meanwhile, the company insists it's done nothing wrong. Leaders of various civil society groups under the aegis of stakeholders' coalition for the protection of the environment and indigents of the host communities of the oil palm estates of the Kamu Oil Palm Company are peaceful protests around the King Square in the city, the Edo State Capital. Grievances are against the Komo Oil Palm Company, which they accuse of destroying their natural environment and forcefully evicting indigents from their farmlands, among other issues. The protesters arrive at the Edo State House of Assembly, where their leaders take turns to speak their minds before handing over their petition to the speaker who has given them audience. They have stolen the lands of the Edo people. They have written deep into over five local governments and several communities and made the ordinary farmers become beggars in their own father's land. A land of 13,750 hectares, and the result by former Edo state governor, Adam Toshomole, over 20 bulldozers are bulldozing community farmland. Hey. You have it in petition, you have the Gazette to support us and all. I can tell you that next week we'll make sure this matter is taken and we'll start uh, going through the uh, usual processes. From the State House of Assembly, the group makes a brief stop at the government house where they echo their messages through inscriptions and music. <laughs> 
Reacting to the protest, the communication officer of Okumu Oil Palm PLC, Mr. Fidelis Olise, absolves the company of any wrongdoing, adding that the company enjoys the best of relationships with its host communities. I will have every document justifying a use of that land. If our land was illegally occupied, are we going to call the government to come and commission the land? It's a simple logic. If the land was illegally occupied, are we going to do an EIA for the Federal Ministry of Environment in conjunction with the Doe State Ministry of Environment? I have a copy right here. Both the aggrieved parties and the company in question have told their sides of the story. The call now is for all to remain calm and allow the state legislature time to make its findings known. That's us over to Abuja. Here's Ibrahim Adra. Ibrahim. Hello, Ijoma. Now, seven cases of Lassa fever has been confirmed in two local government areas of Odo State, Owo, and Akoko Southwest. The Permanent Secretary of the State Minister of Health, Dr. Tayoni, says the affected victims, including a university student, are receiving treatment. He advised residents of the state to avoid contact with any type of rodent and ensure their environment is kept clean always. Currently, there is uh, an outbreak of Lassa fever in the state. Two local governments are affected. Our local government area and Akoko Southwest local government area. Uh, five cases in our local government area and two cases in Akoko Southwest. As we speak, uh, all the cases that are confirmed are under treatment. This is uh, we really we have never really had it in uh, June or July before in during the rainy season. The, it is one of the disease called nosocomia infection, which means it is transmitted between uh, animal and man. The, most of the time it is contacted from, it is spread by uh, rats. And still talking health matters, more allegations have been laid before the House of Representatives Committee investigating the compliance rate of health maintenance organizations to the National Health Insurance Scheme contributions and the utilization of funds by healthcare providers. The Committee on Healthcare Services heard the position of healthcare providers and some enrollees who appeared before the committee. Correspondent Larry Lassisi reports. You are, you are still in the... You, hello? Hello? You are still in the parliament. You are still in the parliament. Professor? You are still in the parliament. Emotions almost boiling over as the executive secretary of the National Health Insurance Scheme is confronted by executives of some health maintenance organizations. It's the second day of the investigative hearing being conducted by the House of Representatives Committee on Healthcare Service into the country's health insurance scheme. The day's proceeding follows the pattern of the previous day with more presentations. HMOs are not good, as we provide our suits are not good. So we cannot just sit down here and say this or that. From the beginning, the NHL has lost their supervisory role. But the providers can no longer, many are trying in the toy. And in a very short time, our providers will quit. I don't know how they will run it. Because nobody, no provider can do surgery for 60,000, major surgery. Even if you are operating a rat, it can't work. A woman narrates her experience when her child was rushed to the hospital. He was actually attended to. Immediately, he was, a drip was passed on him. Lab, everything was, the next thing the doctor said, Hajia, please, we know you are a staff of NHS. 
but do you want the honest truth? I said, what is it? He said, we can't treat your child because HMO will not pay. Lawmakers also air their own views. Hey, Release, are you here? How do HCPs treat you when you go to the hospital? Very shabby, right? They stood here and pontificated as if it's only HMOs or this problem is just with HMOs and NHS. Is that true? It's not true. Prof, are you telling us that you just give money to the HMOs and there's no mechanism that is put in place to monitor that the money you are giving to the HMOs actually gets to the service providers? Eventually, the chairman reminds everyone the purpose of the hearing. Going forward, both the National Health Insurance, both the HMOs, the service providers, and we, the lawmakers, we want to work together to ensure that this system works. With the investigative hearing over, everyone will now have to wait for the committee's report and recommendations that will hopefully transform the health insurance scheme into one that will meet the expectation of most nigerians lanry lassesi channels television news the niger delta development commission ndc is exploring new funding patterns that will help agencies to better tackle the developmental challenges in the region Managing Director of the Commission, Mr. Nsima Ikeri, while playing host to a delegation from a South Korean firm, says NDDC will adopt other possible means to fast-track the development of the Orich region. The meeting with the Korean company is one of the many open-door initiatives of the NDDC to embrace new ideas and innovations that will hasten the development of the Niger Delta region. Infrastructural development and waterways. The leader of the delegation, Chris Ayam, expressed his team's willingness to introduce international funding to the Niger Delta development project. We are interested in coming to replicate such development that you have in Korea here in Nigeria, and we are bringing in the fund. All we need, that is why I have is strength to come to you and look at your face and tell you we can deliver. On his part, the executive office of the South Korean construction company, Mr. Chris Kim, says his company has the capacity and technical competence to execute projects faster. Every project has a kind of agreement that it's unnecessary capable. From that point, I can get everything that we see now because it's, it's finance but the structure is already there. And we are closing, you know, key closing few projects already and I'm closing to be done by Portugal. So uh, that's really uh, giving me the opportunity to speed up this financing. With these words of assurance, the managing director of the NDDC promised to work out a good working relationship with the South Korean team. The infrastructure costs money. Money is limited. So somehow the rate at which we would have loved to move is not the rate we are moving because of the paucity of funds. Why I find your proposal uh, very interesting because what they are offering to us is saying we can help you to finance these projects and give you time to pay over over the years, and that would make a lot of sense. There are hopes that this new relationship will hasten completion of projects in the region and also help interventionist companies deliver more credible and people-oriented projects in record time. And when the news at 10 returns, PZ Cousins unveils its new imperial leather deodorant while champions emerge in the 19th edition of the Middle School Basketball Championship. Stay with Channel Television.